implementation is we've actually put the entire meat of the request in a try. And then in the finally block is where that gets cleaned up. So it doesn't matter if, um, you know, five lines down the stack trace, somebody calls return instead of do next. Before it actually returns control to the application server, the code in that finally block will execute, no matter what. Now there's a few exceptions to that rule, which are, I've never actually seen duplicated, but there are people that theorize that there are ways to get around executing code in the final block. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Can I go over here? Uh, just to get a bit more visibility into uh, your development process. Mm -hmm. um, so let's assume that SAP provides all the security functionality I need. Mm -hmm. um, what secure development practices do you follow yourselves? Um, and what kind of security reviews do you go to beyond uh, it's open and anyone can look at it? Um, and maybe what kind of update mechanisms would you have? Um, because ultimately it's another library, it's another third party code that I have to put into my code. Absolutely, absolutely. So, this uh, is it. vulnerabilities happen. Yep, yep, absolutely. So this is a very, very valid point and something that's come up numerous times on the mailing list is how do we manage ourselves? Um, as a development team, uh, I know that I personally, Jim and Kevin, the three of us who are kind of the, the core development team, we, we pretty heavily review code that gets committed, um, especially if it gets committed from a contributor outside of the core development team. We get, we get patches from people, you know, whoever. Um, so there's a, a, a pretty heavy manual review process. It's, it's, it, we're still kind of a baby project. In, in, in terms of, of our process. Um, we just recently, as far as getting updates out, so say somebody does find a vulnerability, we fix it, or somebody fixes it, we check it in, and then the next what, the obvious question is, how do we push that out, right? How do we, how do we get that out to people who are using it? So we're, with the Java project, we just started using Maven, Maven Central as a, as a distribution hub. Um, and we'll be doing uh, continuous integration builds, so snapshot builds, to our Maven repository on a regular basis. Um, so that kind of addresses the patching question. Um, other than that, you know, I think that we're still in the phases of, of our process where we're still trying to get it figured out what the best, best processes are. Uh, I think that where we're at right now, we, we we do a pretty good job of doing it manually, but there's a lot of things that should be, that need to be documented about our processes and, and made open like that. So I guess another question in that case is, uh, when you get vulnerability, uh, do you patch it horizontally across all the uh, supported platforms as well, or? Generally speaking, yeah. And, and, and it actually brings up a really good point where, um, you know, in, in today's world, there are things, so, so some of those languages are not at the same level as Java, as far as their completeness, as far as uh, their support. Um, and that's, that's pretty clearly documented on, on those project pages. Uh, but generally speaking, we all talk to each other. And so if somebody comes to the Java Google repository and, and drops a bug in that says, oh, hey, there's this this issue over here. Generally, that's going to ripple across all the others. Um, again, probably an area we can use some improvement. Um, right now, it's, it's really just kind of the, you know, the three of us on Java that are kind of running the show, and then we, we let that kind of trickle down to the other, to the other uh, implementations. Um, so I, and another, another thing to address one of your, one of your questions that actually just dawned on me. So we're getting ready to uh, release 2.0 uh, general availability here within the, hopefully the next month or two. We're currently awaiting the results of our, uh, the NSA is actually reviewing uh, mainly the encryption in the new Asapi. We completely rewrote the encryption, the reference implementation of the encryption. So there is a, a lot of peer review and, and third party review happening as well. Um, you know, I, I, I can think of a handful of times when I've seen people completely non-affiliated with OWASP or the Asabi um, doing code review or going through and saying, oh, hey, here's this thing. 
right? This should probably be fixed, right? So That's I, it's happening. It, it probably needs to be more documented. Oh. But I, I guess what I'm leading to is, uh, you know, you mentioned yourself that maybe right now you're still kind of figuring out the processes, right? Mm -hmm. But at what point do you say you guys are going to be mature enough for large self-organizations to start picking it up and uh, use it in their environment? I think, I think about the same time I released GA. Because as soon as we go GA with 2.0, we're going to have to address those concerns. <coughs> so we've, we've all got things that we've done. Um, and, and, and those things will, about that same time, will become standard practice. We'll Jamie, you got something to add? Yeah, Edward, um, uh, I like to add that the most important thing we do for these happy products that are under our process is 120% visibility in everything we do. We don't have offline conversations. Everything we're doing is having this happy dev and user <laughs> list. When we make a mistake, we're very, very public about it. We're also three, uh, it's only really three of us who are the core job of developers who are savvy. And we found a small mistake yesterday. I'm patching it tomorrow. And I'm releasing the release candidates tomorrow. So we're, we're small, we're agile, we're using formal source code repositories, we're using Maven, we're completely public on everything we communicate. We patch stuff incredibly fast and we're responsible about calling something production. The SAPI 2.0 is still, it has a release candidate. We're waiting for the NSA to finish their review. The other thing is, is that as we hit, um, <coughs> again, as we hit a, 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 a final release candidate for 2.0, we have a lot more companies using it right now. Already today, I know of five top-tier banks, two NGOs, um, a whole bunch of, of giant enterprises who are using this imperfect library and it's saving them a huge amount of money because especially the encoder, the validator, our utilities. These are all production-ready, highly scalable chunks of code that we're already using in, in sites that are taking millions upon millions of hits per day. So. We have work to do, like any open source project, but I, I think we're, we're in, in part production quality for both of the library, and we'll be completing that as, as 2.0 comes, comes to GA. Is that mm -hmm. fair, Chris? Uh, absolutely. 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 I, I agree with that 100%. Um, and we'd love you know. your advice that as more companies like, like Symantec begin to adopt the SAPI, we're very open to your advice in helping us fine tune our process. Even better, if, if a company of your size is going to is going to depend on a SAPI, this is a, a multi-million dollar topic in your company, I'm sure. <coughs> you don't want to dedicate half of one of your guys' time to participating in the project. It would help Semantic. It would help the SAPI project. It would help the whole world, which is Semantic's mission. So we would love your participation. Crack the whip. Help us become better. We need your help to do it. Uh, sorry. Oh. Uh, just to add to that. So basically, I'm, what I'm leading to is understanding the risks of uh, using this as any other third party software, right? Mm -hmm. Certainly. Um, and the better visibility there is into the uh, development processes. And uh, um, because we still find bugs in open source code, which is supposedly the open, you know, reviewed by all the security community every day, right? So that's why better understanding these processes, uh, what reviews you go through, you know, what development processes you follow yourself, I think uh, that could uh, lead to better understanding of what risk I'm going to be taking as a company by adapting this. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you a lot more about this offline as well. I'll, I'll drop you some email. Again, I'm, I'm honest, open, transparent about where it's happening is good, where it's effective, where we need work. I'll be glad to have a detailed discussion with you all. And, and, and you'll find that just about all of us on the savvy, both the savvy dev and the savvy users mailing list, completely open to those conversations at any point. Go ahead. I'd like to find more information on what you mentioned, um, larger companies, how did they deploy this, what was their process, and even going to this uh, point, you talk about patches, how does, if a company has already deployed this to all the development teams, how do they also deploy these patches on the company regularly, do they wait? And I guess my bigger question is, what are the details in a larger company and how they implement these patches? What are the problems? What are the problems? <laughs> the, the, the problems are we have too many dependencies right now. So we have like, like 20 or 30 additional very common third party libraries in the job. This is a problem with Java development in general. You're a Java development shop as well. How many jars do you need to run your app? 40, 50? So we have a lot, we're doing such complex stuff. 
we wouldn't have too many dependencies right now. Some folks have complained about that. But we, um, <coughs> honestly, most of the organizations that, that I've seen use a SACI, they use it for two main purposes today. They need coding. By the way, they use the validation. So they use coding and the validators. And, that, and then the utilities for, for caching disabled and stuff like that. That stuff is turnkey ready to go now. If you're used to, and same with logging, I would dare say. Most people don't need an authentication layer. They already do an example or something else. So I don't know anyone who's using this happy authentication instruction today. The access control is just an interface. So some people have their own methodology and use our interface. Where I think the SAPI's big role today is we're not documenting this low enough yet. The very SAPI is brilliant today is the encoder, the validator, and the utilities. And I already, I already see that in use in, again, five top major banks, two and two big financial NGOs. Well, I think I, I think you touch on kind of a, a really valid point here, and this this does speak uh, kind of to the deployment question and the deployment problem. The ASAPI is not meant to be, or it's it's not intended to be a one size fits all solution. Uh, you know, and I can't think of very many people that I know of that are using it in its entirety. Um, there's I, I I highly doubt there's anybody out there using every single component in the ASAPI in their application. Um, the, the goal is to be able to deploy it in a componentized back, uh, componentized manner, right? That, and that's the reason we've gone to make one of these as a, uh, as a deployment mechanism, it automatically addresses the problem of dependencies. Um, and it automatically resolves the problem of caching. I can say, I can set up as a development shop, I've got my local Maven repository that talks to Maven Central. It's checking for updates all the time. If there's an update, I can have it set up so that A, it says, oh hey, this library's been updated, you want to update it? Or B, uh, it can just download the, the updated version, and then it's, it, and then it's at the local repository. Um, level where those decisions are made. So at the end of the day, really what, what we're trying to do with, with Maven is solve those deployment problems. Deployment is always a problem. Um, any Java application, it, as I'm sure you're aware. Deployment of dependencies, managing dependencies, it's a huge problem. That problem's already been solved uh, by people far more intelligent than I am at solving that problem. So really, we're just kind of trying to build on, on the work that other people have done to solve those issues. Does that answer, answer your question? I just want to add I definitely, I'd like, if you want to talk more, a little more in detail later as far as the deployment strategy, uh, having done it, I'd be more than happy to, to sit down and have a conversation with you. Chris, there's a, there's a great document that I saw on the DSABA website about design patterns mm -hmm. that's talking exactly about about, you know, when you actually figure through the keyboard, how are you going to integrate it? That's a bunch of different approaches. Absolutely. So there's, uh, and I believe that's Mike Overski's work. Uh, Mike actually did a really, really great run of documentation. Uh, and so there, there is some really great, the design, design patterns, or, or I, I think that's what he called it, the design patterns, having design patterns. Doc, very, very good overview of, high level overview of, of how to do it um, and, and kind of the right pattern you want to use in action. How much, do you know what time this is supposed to be? We got five minutes? Okay. Uh, so we got about five more minutes. Is there any more questions? See, I got any more questions now. <laughs> Get over here. It, it is an implementation of the interface that right now ships with the exact. Um, is there any, like, uh, some policy, I mean, some big, more realistic demo app that actually utilizes? Yeah, it's on my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, there, there actually is. There is a, 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 a swing set, which is, 
that that was the intent of that project. Um, unfortunately, it's a little out of date. 